man positioned to touch teens, youths, young professionals, and young adults. His face and energy gets younger every day. Look at me now. I'm young at heart. If you look at my, at my air, you think I'm old. But you know, in the heart, in the mind, where the blood is running and flowing, there's a young man inside here. And that young man is eager and ready to move on and to fly with our young people. You have a reason to lead. Because the university don and renowned mathematician, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi, will be giving you the ultimate equation to become transformed to lead. We're going to have impartation on young people. Our youths, our students, our young adults. Something big for all young people from September 30 to October 3, 2022, live at Obafemi Awolowo Stadium, former Liberty Stadium, Ibadan, or your state, Nigeria, and broadcast to the world, their satellite, and all our social media platforms. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi will be ministering with his adopted son, Minister Dusi Oyekon. Can I ask the Lord? Can I ask the Lord? Hey! What can I do? Stick out, stretch out, stand out, and I'm sure you'll be transformed to lead. Say, I'll be here. I'll be here. Bow me down. All of the days. And yes, they are here. They come for the convocation from every corner of the globe, searching for answers. Teens, youths, young adults, thronging for impartation. And then, sorrow is turned to joy. Since a very hopeless case, I found myself so into drugs, they brought me down to Sakachi Hospital over here in Kwara State. Even before Daddy Kumi started praying, I just noticed something had happened. It was as if I was brought out of a pit. Since then, I can't stand the smell or the sight of anyone smoking. Today, I'm a son. Today, my life is amazing. Turn around and uh, I'm just happy. Morning. Turn to dancing. I was introduced to marijuana. A program titled Impact, put together by Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuye for youth. I remember the message on day two, that's letter M. It was titled, Moving Up From Mediocrity to Mastery by a Miracle. That message seared my heart. It pierced my soul. Hidden talents discovered and promoted. Let us shout the hallelujah to him. Because there is impact. There are the victoriouses of this generation and that is how we have so leave me at the altar with my father. At the altar is a man positioned to touch teens, youths, young professionals, and young adults. His face and energy gets younger every day. Look at me now. I'm young at heart. If you look at my, at my air, you'll think I'm old. But you know, in the heart, in the mind, where the blood is running and flowing, there's a young man inside here. And that young man is eager and ready to move on and to fly with our young people. You have a reason to lead. Because the university don and renowned mathematician, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi, will be giving you the ultimate equation to become transformed to lead. We're going to have impartation on young people. Our youths, 
our students, our young adults. Something big for all young people from September 30 to October 3, 2022, live at Obafemi Awolowo Stadium, former Liberty Stadium, Ibadan, Oyo State, Nigeria, and broadcast to the world via satellite and all our social media platforms. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi will be ministering with his adopted son, Minister Dusi Oyekon. Stick out, stretch out, stand out, and I'm sure you'll be transformed to lead. Say, I'll be here. Bowing down. All of the day.
Victorious youth, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now the drill one more time. To those on my left hand, when I say impact, you know how to respond. Hold on. Then I'll call on those facing me directly. When I call impact, you know how to respond. And then I'll call to those on my right hand. When I call impact, you should know how to respond. Are we ready? Are we ready? Now to my... moderator. Praise the Lord. I hope uh, you are excited as I am today. I am very honored uh, to be given this opportunity to address this uh, distinguished global audience of youths from around the world. I have been given the honor of sharing with you briefly on the topic turning your gifts 
into value. This is a very important topic because uh, it has great potential to impact your lives and for good. And as youths and young people, you have the great open door before you and to impact your families, to impact your communities, to impact uh, your countries for good. And therefore, uh, you must take this opportunity to ensure that you make the most of what has been put uh, for you today. And I want to tell you that I have risen to the position where I've risen, but I was an ordinary girl like you and, uh, and all of you that are here listening to me today. And therefore, I want to tell you that everyone, every one of you has potential to rise to great heights and to greater heights uh, when, as we put all these things that we're going to share briefly into practice. So I'm going to uh, anchor my presentation on um, Proverbs, on Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16 which says a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. I would say that again, a man's gift, so should I say a youth's gift, makes room for him, makes room for her and brings her before great men. So really God has entrusted each and every one of you with gifts and these gifts there are resources, there are abilities that God has given you for you to be able to achieve great things. And we are saying, turning these gifts, these giftings that God has given you into value. So value there means worth. You know, we are saying you must um, turn that gift into wealth. You must profit from that gift. And, and even, even as you profit, profit, you must profit the people around you, you must profit uh, your countries, you must profit wherever it is that God has planted you with the gifts that he has given you. So you have the responsibility as a youth to look at what gifts is it that God has given you and use that gift and indeed room will be made for you, the world will make room for you to be able to achieve that. And these gifts, the gifts of God, I should say, are freely given to each and every one and so that to be able to uh, make use for them. So you don't have to buy it with money. It is an important thing that God has put within you. You just need to discover it and then you need to turn it into value and benefit from it. So... I want to uh, briefly share with you on how you'll be able to identify your gift and how you'll be able to deploy it so that you profit from it. And that um, if you use this gift, like I've mentioned, it will be something that will bless you abundantly. And even as I speak briefly, I might share one or two things with you in terms of what helped me as well to be transformed from an ordinary young person in an average home to be able to come to this position of, of uh, influence in my country and which you can also do in your country as well. So remember this thing, God has given this gift and this gift, when you make use of it, when you discover it, make use of it, it will bring you before great men. And you will not be the first one because there have been people that have um, youths like yourselves that have been able to uh, use their gifts and they've been brought before great men, they've been brought before presidents, they've been brought before pastors, they've been brought before organizations in this world that uh, make matters, they've been brought before big corporations that have been able to make a difference. So you are not any different and that is why we i'll briefly mention again what i mean by gifts because there are so many things that um, uh, 
gifts, there's so many gifts that we can talk about, we can talk about, I know we can talk about spiritual gifts, but this time we're just talking about the ordinary gifts that you are in born with. So what is a gift? It is a skill. Oh, it is an ability that you naturally possess as an individual. It is also your ability to do something well. It is uh, something that God has been able to uh, give in your life. And this skill, you have to make use of it. It is just, just like any other thing. The issue is that uh, if you have been given this gift, and all this while, through your secondary school, through your university, or whether you are working now, you haven't made use of it. It will, it will not impact anyone because it will just die down there. So the issue is that this gift you have been given, and God requires you as a youth, as a young person, that uh, you are a steward of these gifts. And you should be able to arise and make use of them and be able to benefit uh, your society and yourself. So when I say gifts, what do I mean? So like I've mentioned, natural possess. So some people, for example, we had our choir, we had the ones who were uh, leading our songs. You had those beautiful voices. You saw the orchestra and people that are able to play those instruments. All those are gifts. You can have that voice, you can have you can be have the ability to write. If you are like me, you must have read some books, even from uh, many people that have written books. And some of them are books that have impacted you, are books that uh, when you read, you're saying, oh, this is a real gift that God has given upon this person. So it can be, uh, of course, it can be writing, it can be your communication skills, there are people who are great orators. There are people who have been able to do so many things and the doors have been opened for them. You can be an athlete. There are people through their athletics, through the what they have been able to achieve, it has opened doors for them. And they've appeared before great men. They've done great things and they've been able to make a difference in their uh, communities. It can be uh, something that... Um, for example, uh, you can have uh, entrepreneurship skills. So there are people, business people out there. And some of them, if you even uh, try and uh, go through the social media, the internet, you'll be able to see young people that are excelling in the technology, in the technological sector, in the different sectors, in uh, different professions that are rising there and are doing something because they've been able to make use of their gifts. Some, it is art. You know, there are some people, naturally, they're artistic, and they've been able to develop that uh, art, and it has taken them far. And uh, so what I mean by saying that is that really the these gifts, are many, they are endless we can't exhaust them so god has been able to give all the millions of us that are there different gifts that we're able to do and i know that the youths in many countries um, make up the largest population in the different countries meaning that this is a very good opportunity for us as youths for you as youths to rise up and be able to make a difference in there. So when I mean gifts, like I've mentioned, there are so many. And that's why you hear sometimes uh, people say this one is multi-talented or multi-gifted because there are so many gifts that they are able to use and then they are able to benefit from. And so I would encourage you that after listening to this presentation, when you have time, you should make time for it. You take time write down what are the many gifts that God has put within you and be able to uh, check, prioritize which ones are the ones that uh, you are most passionate about and then see how to prioritize, how to be able to develop them. So 
you asked me, uh, how will I know that this is my gift or this is my talent? I'm using the word talent loosely. This is my gift or this is my talent. I've, like I've said, it is an issue where you have to um, ask yourself, what is it that I am good at? What is it that I love to do? What are my interests? What are the uh, issues, areas where I'm most successful in? And by that, it will be able to uh, help you identify those gifts. And indeed, you can list them, you can prioritize them. And then you ask me now that uh, then the gifts, once I have identified them, what do I do with them? There are many things that you can do with gifts. I wanted to share briefly on uh, a number of people that were able, both in biblical times and contemporary times, that were able to uh, deploy their gifts and were successful in um, their various endeavors. We can talk about Joseph. We can talk about Paul. In our contemporary times, we can talk about uh, many people. We can talk about musicians like Don Moen. We can talk about uh, people that uh, Mark Zuckerberg, who's used this gift of innovation to revolutionize the world through social media. We can talk about many people that have used their gifts, whether of leadership, whether of uh, um, whether in whatever areas that um, uh, they have used to be able to make an impact. So I can most uh, in my interactions with youth, there've been some that would uh, come and say, okay, um, I think now that I've known that uh, maybe I'm talented in music, why am I still at school and learning all these uh, other things? Why can't I launch out into the industry and make use of my gift? And I would say that do not, education is very essential in helping you to make use of your gift and to be fruitful and to get the best out of it. So don't neglect education. And I, I wish to talk to those young people who are still in um, high school, the ones who are still in uh, uh, colleges, universities, that make the most of your time in those uh, school, in the college. Make sure you get a good education because that's a very firm foundation that will be able to help you now to as you develop your gift. I have had a uh, few people, you know, uh, people who are working, young professionals saying, okay, the job that I'm in now, I think it is, uh, you know, I'm not getting the most of it. Uh, it's dry. I don't think this is where I'm supposed to be. And I say, stick in there. There is something still in there that you would need to learn that will be able to help you even as you now launch your gift. Some experiences, you only learn them sometimes through uh, the jobs, through the experiences that are not so uh, pleasant, but you find that at the end of it, those are the things that are going to help you to uh, do improve yourself and get value out of your gift. And I will say, once you have identified those gifts, you have to volunteer yourself. You have to say, where is it? Where is the area that I can make use of my gifts? Whether in church, whether uh, in your community, whether at school, do something with that gift. Like I've mentioned, if you just let it there, it is not going to develop. But you have to look for opportunities. And if you can't see opportunities, knock on the door of other people. There are people that have gone before you, your areas of interest, your gift. you find that there are some people, young people that are pro uh, making progress in that area. There are older people who have made it in that area. Make it, their doors are normally open. Make it um, your, your, make it uh, uh, something that you'll be able to reach out to them and be able to help them help you in terms of uh, what you can do with those gifts. So the issue that I want to also mention is that uh, most of us, when we look at your gift, you say, 
okay, this gift is too small, or I, I can't see an opportunity here, unless I go maybe to another country, or I go abroad, or I go to another place, I can tell you that uh, you can be able to flourish with your gift just there where you are. Yes, if opportunities come, you should be able to go. Like I've mentioned, every one of us has the same uh, gifts that God has given us, and you can still make use of it there where you are. So all you need is to have that positive attitude. I know that many youths get easily discouraged. For example, those who are entrepreneurs or want to try entrepreneurship or Maybe it's a job. You find that uh, you do something, you invest in a venture, and then things don't work out. Youths are impatient because they're in this world, and it has made it um, now in this world, everything is fast. You have instant everything. But I can tell you that the developing of that gift and being able to get value from it, it is something that to take time. It is something that you have to invest in. So you don't need to be in a hurry. You have to have that positive attitude. Yes, even when you have failed or maybe a door hasn't opened, I know there are plenty of youths that are jobless. And many of them are saying, what am I going to do? Doors are closing here. Just know that even with the doors closing, keep an open mind. There are many things that you can do. You can go, you can further your education. And that can also open other doors. You can do volunteer work. You can go and... Uh, get into some of these um, uh, professions that or uh, in industries that people don't want to uh, feel it is lowly, you'll be able to learn something there and that will be able to impact you positively. So, and it will help you also to get all the required skill sets for you to uh, be able to uh, do that. In this day and age, we have a lot of youths that are thinking uh, that are going through depression and all those uh, other issues because they are looking at maybe they are looking at their friends and saying, "I'm not going as fast as I am." Pace yourself. You yourself set your own goal because the issue is that uh, you are not you are competing really against yourself. Once you've set your goal, like I've mentioned your overall goal, your compelling vision. What is this that I want to achieve? You know that you are moving at your own pace. So you don't have to get depressed that others have moved uh, further. I always give an example of a tree. You know, when you have a tree and you have a, a plant like a cereal, you find that you can plant them at the same time. One of them, it will take longer because it's still trying to get roots, you know, to build its roots so that when it comes up, it is able to be sustained. There are others who shoot up very quickly, but might not have depth in them. So you have an opportunity as youth to distinguish yourself in the gifts that you have, make the most of it and make it count for yourself, make it count for your community, make it count for your country. So really the issue is that what normally hinders most, I know that, is that um, many youths uh, lack the issue of self-discipline. There are so many things that are distracting youths these days, and there are so many things that can distract you, but you should be self-disciplined. You should be focused. You should be committed to learning, continuous committed to learning. And that is what um, I know that it's been a very short uh, presentation, but what I want to leave with you is that, please, as you go out, write down your goal, get your gift. Okay, get your gift, write down your goal and what it is that um, you need uh, to do. I have um, met so many youths a number of them uh, are so passionate. For example, now, when you get down and uh, get your gift, you'll be able to say, okay, all these other people just focus on this, my gift. For example, it's singing. But I can tell you that you need to make sure that for you to uh, sustain that um, uh, value that you are going to get for your gift, you need 
to have your goals aligned with that goal that God has for your life. You know, I always say that um, you, youth can do so many things. We can do so many things in here, but then you should be able to do something that will lives of eternity as you are pursuing your gift and developing your gift know that you have a master and make sure that christ is at the center of your life and this is going to anchor you because i can tell you there are so many temptations that come out there as you are uh, going through with your uh, gifts as you are going through in your profession as you are going through in your education you find that opportunities, there are so many people that will bring uh, different um, temptations around you, opportunities for you to make shortcuts, opportunities to, um, uh, to, be, to get into vices that are all over there. But then when you know the overall goal and you have your grounded properly in the Lord, you'll be able to ensure that all these things are working towards getting your goal. All these things are working towards you benefiting. And I can tell you that uh, doors are uh, open for such a person because there are so many institutions, there are so many uh, opportunities You have that ability and you have that potential and it is only you that can limit yourself in uh, getting towards achieving what you have you have set for yourself so make use of all the opportunities that you have around you and focus i think the issue of focus is one of the things that um, mainly gets uh, some of the youth to uh, lose uh, the track, but focus and have that mindset of I am here and um, God has put me here to make a solution, to create a solution in uh, the problems that are facing my, myself, my community and the people around me. And once you have that mindset, you'll find that issues of innovations uh, come in and then you'll be able to uh, achieve that goal, even as you commit to that. And finally, I would uh, want to mention that uh, you should be willing, willing uh, to do small things. You know, there are many youths that want to start big and they despise uh, small beginnings and will be able to say, when I want to make it big. And because of that, uh, you find that they end up uh, making shipwreck, but begin small. You shouldn't, uh, if you, at this corner where God has put you, begin doing something, making some positive impact. And you'll see that uh, uh, at the end of it, you'll be able to, uh, to do greater doors will be able to open for you because people around you are looking at you. And when they see what you are able to do, you'll find that sometimes uh, I have seen it, that even in a place where you didn't know, you didn't put anything in, when people elsewhere are discussing and they're saying there is this issue and we need uh, somebody to come and address this issue, 
your name will come up and you'll be saying, how did they, those people know about me? How did those people know about this youth? It's because that small thing, those small things that you are doing there, doing them faithfully, doing them with uh, all your might, doing, putting your uh, excellency in there, making sure that you look at it over and over in this insignificant corner, but I'm still doing something to make sure that uh, uh, I do the best that I can. I can assure you that things will be able to, doors will be able to open that you never uh, knew about. And God, with God on your side, like I said, with God on your side, you are already, you know, above the majority. You are already ahead of the other youths around you. And so, um, I hope that uh, you will take time to reflect on your gifts and uh, really do put in uh, the little that I've mentioned to be able to develop them. And like I mentioned, don't be discouraged and with God on your side, in you achieve great things. And may I only say, may the Lord bless you and bless uh, your gifts and open those for those gifts to manifest and to be able to be useful in the in the vineyard of the Lord and even in your community and country. Thank you. Good advice. What do you say? Thank you, Justice Mugeni Mulenga. We've learned a lot. From the Lord, we've learned that we should make good use of our time, discover our gifts, make good use of our gifts. We should look for opportunities. And of course, if it has to do with knocking doors, God Almighty will open those doors for you in Jesus' name. Being that this is your hour of transformation, those locked doors will be opened in Jesus' name. She has charged us to have a positive attitude. Will you have a positive attitude? I will have a positive attitude in Jesus' name. Because before you were formed, he knew you. God knew you. And those locked doors will be opened in Jesus' name. Set goals for yourself. Pace yourself. And I pray that the Almighty God, through this program, through the power on the man of God, will transform you to a position of leadership in Jesus' name. Let me rephrase that you will be repositioned to lead in Jesus' name. I will be repositioned to lead in Jesus' name. I will be positioned to lead in Jesus' name. Say that for yourself. We've come to the hour of listening to our guest artist, one of our own, a gospel singer, born and raised, I thought you would clap. I thought I'll be hearing applause now. I thought I would be feeling excited now. Born and raised. Thank you in Jesus' name. Um, I can happily say that I'm raised and my colleagues here were raised in this church from birth. And um, we are here doing wonders from God, for God. And I pray that from after this program, you will start to do wonders for God in Jesus' name. Come on, please, show that you are happy. Are you happy? Now, we want to express that joy and happiness in worship to God. Can we stand up our feet? Hallelujah. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who was, who is, and is to come, we will not be silent. We will always worship God with all that we have. And we all that we have, we will give him praise because he is God. And I
day of my life. Come to my, my last breath. I will worship you, Jesus. You are all that matters. You are all that matters to me, Jesus. Please. I will worship you forever. 